LU officials celebrate the new law school. City police target back to school speeders. And the city explores options for the Fort William Gardens. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Premier Kathleen Wynne joined university officials, First Nation leaders, and local dignitaries today to celebrate the official opening of Lakehead University's Faculty of Law. It's an historic event as this is Northern Ontario's first law school and the first new law school to open in Ontario in over 40 years. Tara Allaire reports. The law school welcomed its charter class to their new home the former Port Arthur Collegiate Institute. The new school will focus on northern issues and Aboriginal and natural resource law. Officials say it'll help northern Ontario students enter the law profession and study closer to their families and communities. Founding Dean Lee Stucer said he knew this day would come, but it wasn't without its obstacles. It's, it's been, you know, there's been ups and downs. It's a lot of hard work. A lot of people put an awful lot of work and effort into this. And, and I think that's why it was so important today. You know, it's seeing the community uh, because there, were, there was a lot of naysayers in southern Ontario that said this couldn't happen. And we proved them wrong. And uh, I think that's why the community really deserves a big pat in the back. Kathleen Wynne addressed the charter class and acknowledged the years of work and commitment that made the law school a reality. She says the school will help grow Northern Ontario's economy and create more jobs. This school is going to bridge that gap. It's going to help to bridge that gap. I'm confident that this new school will have a significant impact on Northern communities for generations to come. Lakehead's Faculty of Law should help ease the shortage of lawyers who specialize in Northern issues. With the majority of the 60 student charter class from Northern Ontario, they'll be able to focus on the issues that matter most to their home communities. One of the many draws of the new law school. It did have um, exactly what I wanted, you know, that personal education, small class size. And I really like the idea of being able to get to know our professors on a one one-on-one basis. And this small class size of 60 students is, is perfect. So um, this was definitely uh, the place that I wanted to come to. It was my number one choice. The focus on natural resources and the fact that they're bridging the gap between uh, what we learn in theory and what we do in practice. So I think that's a key component that attracted a lot of law students towards Lakin University. I think uh, being part of the charter class was a once in a lifetime opportunity which uh, you cannot let go of. Tara Allaire, TBT News. Premier Wynne was also on hand last night to support Michael Gravel as the Liberal candidate for Thunder Bay Superior North in the next provincial election. The night marked Gravel's sixth nomination since first being elected in 1995. After battling cancer this year, Gravel says this time is extra special. He says the great economic development opportunities in the North and working alongside Premier Wynne are two factors that motivated him to run again. You know, it's an exciting night for me, and uh, you know, after 18 years of doing this, I, um, I, I may be more excited than I was the first time I was nominated. I, uh, I love this work, and I obviously will respect whatever the uh, my constituents uh, decide. But um, I'm certainly going to be uh, putting my my best foot forward and. Uh, hoping they will, they will let me continue to work for them and to fight for them and after the next provincial election. Gravel was unopposed for the nomination. He will run against NDP nominee Andrew Fold and Conservative nominee Tamara Johnson whenever the next provincial election is held. And the Premier had one other stop on her Thunder Bay tour. She was a special guest at Woodcrest School this morning where she welcomed students back for their first day. Courtney Rutherford has the story. There's one thing that grade one student Christina Karina has been looking forward to saying all morning. Pleased to meet you, Honorable Kathleen. Karina, along with the rest of Woodcrest School, were waiting for the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne, to join them on their first day back to school. Wynne showed up in traditional back to school fashion, riding in on a yellow bus. After arriving at Woodcrest, she joined the kids at the back of the school, and it didn't take long for her to jump in. 
After jumping rope, she was taught by some of the students how to hopscotch and hula hoop. The buzz in the air outside on the playground was a clear indication that the students were not only excited to get back to school, but to have the Premier join them on their first day. Because um, I get to um, play some games and have fun. She, she's just so important and it feels cool that somebody so cool and important is coming to our school. It's pretty cool. She's pretty important. A lot of people know about her and it's just cool that she's at our school. After being outside, Wynn moved inside to meet with the kindergarten class to hand out snacks and read a book. Val Bodak, principal of Woodcrest School, says having the Premier visit the school on the first day starts the year off on a positive note. To know that somebody shows that kind of interest in what's happening in our community and uh, in our schools throughout the board, um, to watch those little kids and the bigger kids get off the bus, and to know um, that somebody important, somebody in our political system is there to see how their day starts. It was neat to hear kids uh, talking around her saying, I think she rules the province. So it was exciting. They didn't know much about her before she came, but I know that they were very keen to find out about her. After the morning wrapped up, Wynne said goodbye to the students and moved on to the next stop on her Thunder Bay tour. Courtney Rutherford, TBT News. And with school back in session, some motorists were being hit with speeding tickets. City police officers are patrolling school zones to remind drivers to slow down. Traffic officers were stationed on Edward Street near Dennis Franklin Cromarty High School today. They were enforcing speeding infractions because the majority of students headed back to school today and officers say they don't want to see anyone getting hurt while crossing the street. Police say the vast majority of drivers are going at or below the limit, but maximum speed zones are in place for a reason. They don't change during summer months and speed is the major cause of serious injuries during a collision. Officers say enforcing the law is too late once a collision has occurred. Proactive, trying to slow people down. So if, if they are involved in a collision, that uh, the injuries are going to be far less if the speeds are reduced, especially when we're talking about uh, pedestrians and children crossing the roadway. So this time of year, there's a lot more children out, especially near the school zones. We want to make sure people are driving at or below the maximum posted speed limit, and we're out here to ensure that that occurs. Officers will be patrolling school zones all week. They're handing out tickets to anyone going above the speed limit, along with distracted drivers and anyone not wearing a seatbelt. If and when the proposed event centre moves ahead, what will become of the Fort William Gardens? City administration has already begun to ponder that very question. The city has issued a request for, propose, pr for proposal inviting submissions from private sector consultation firms. City staff want the consultant to fully examine all possible uses for the 62-year-old building and engage with interested stakeholders like the area BIA, nearby businesses and residents, according to facilities and fleet manager Michael Smith. Key things is um, what the uses from a recreation and, a, and a, a leisure recreation. There's certainly lots of sports groups, lots of private uh, users of this facility. Certainly you have the uh, Fort William uh, Curling Club. Um, so those types of things need to be taken into consideration. But certainly from a city perspective... The consultant will be expected to have a completed report ready to hand over to city administration by the new year. As for a budget, Smith says it's still too early to get into specific numbers. In the, uh, um, the budget that was identified through the phase three, um, but until we get the RFPs back from the consultants to really get a good handle on what their, their proposals look like or the pricing, then the, the, the city would make a decision based on that. All proposals must be submitted to the city by September 26th. The port of Thunder Bay is continuing to lag behind when it comes to cargo shipments compared to last year's numbers. According to Port Authority statistics, grain shipments were way down in June and July, and the month of August is proving to be the same. Just two years ago, nearly 700,000 tons of grain was shipped during that month, but it's now down to less than 400,000. The total cargo has also continued to fall, with just over 500,000 tons shipped last month. That's down 40,000 from August of last year. And for the year to date, the local port is currently at about 3.2 million tons compared to 4 million in the past two years. Port Authority CEO Tim Heaney says that he attributes the recent statistics to the late growing season. The record in, uh, in project cargo shipments last year were certainly a lot weaker than that this year. We haven't seen the wind turbines we did last year. So every year is different, uh, but uh, you know, we're looking forward to the oil sands picking back up, so we think it'll get going again. Heaney expects numbers to jump in October. The City of Dryden has approved the tender for the rehabilitation of the King Street underpass, which connects most of the city to the Trans-Canada Highway. 
The project was discussed at a special meeting of Dryden Council late this afternoon. The province is covering most of the bill. That's welcome news for the cash-strapped city, which received 80% funding for the project to the tune of $685,000. Dryden's 20% share will be paid out of the city's 2013 budget. Ontario Minister of Infrastructure Glenn Murray made the announcement on his recent tour through the Northwest, and Dryden Mayor Craig Nuttall expects to hear from the minister again soon. Uh, he made a comment that perhaps now we won't be getting any more letters from uh, Mayor Nuttall, but I can assure you I have another project on my plate. But we we're very fortunate to get what we did get. The construction will limit access to the city's downtown core to just a single route, but the project should be completed this fall. Well, to some, it may not seem like the trendiest place to shop, but a group of camp quality volunteers are making it cool to buy from a thrift store. They're throwing a thrift shop party next Friday evening, September 13th, at the CLE's Heritage Building. All proceeds go to the charity, which helps to lift the spirits of children with cancer with a fun-filled camp week and other year-round programs. Party organizers have been busy selling tickets and promoting the event at local bars dressed in their own clothing from thrift shops. And so far, it appears residents are pretty excited about the idea. Usually at a lot of parties, it's a lot of hassle to try and get dressed up. And most people at Thunder Bay come here to, to get dressed up, right? You find old things, it's really fun, it's really easy and it's cheap. So we thought that'd be the most efficient way and the most fun way of throwing a party. When people, outside groups or others, plan events for Camp Quality, it's always a relief because we are a bunch of volunteers that put on this event every year. We try to raise $100,000 every year to run our program. And so when someone else steps forward to say that they're going to do something, and it's always a, a relief and a benefit for us as well. Tickets are $5 a piece. They're available at Mirror Mirror Salon or by contacting Camp Quality Northwestern Ontario. Further details are available.